Hey guys, welcome to another Bob Ross and the Art of Guitar video. In this video, I'm going to address a topic that gets brought up or drawn to my attention from time to time, and that's usually a question asking me where are my influences coming from, what am I working on, uh, because my sound comes across as more of a modern approach as opposed to more of an old school approach like a bebop style playing. And I think that a big reason for that has to do with what it is I'm actually practicing. And it also is, of course, the players that I'm listening to. So let me address one part of that. One part of that is the people that I listen to, uh, I really dig tenor sax players a lot. So, of course, I'm listening to Mark Turner. Um, I really dig Jerry Bergonzi. Uh, there's a guy that I've listened to on and off for the years named Rich Perry. And although Rich Perry records a lot of standard tunes under the uh, Steeplechase label, you really should check him out because his approach to standards is not just the usual, you know, vocabulary. I mean, he's throwing in, you know, things that we can all relate to. But his approach, his phrasing, the spaces that he's leaving in, in his solos, it's incredible. You, you should definitely check Rich Perry out. Uh, just tons of great examples of his playing. He's, there's so many records that he has out at this point. So... Uh, and of course, you know, for guitarists, I, I listen to what a lot of us, you know, a lot of the players that we all can relate to, like Mike Marino, uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel, I really dig Adam Rogers, um, Lage Loon, or Lage Loon, uh, you know, so I really dig all those guys. And um, alto players, I really like um, uh, Will Vinson, you know, and of course I listen to pianists too, but what I really dig about players is what what captures my attention has to do I'm of course I'm drawn to those players that are you know can play a lot you know I I was always big into like the shred guitar thing still am but I really dig when there's more phrasing uh, and more of a voice leading component I, I I would say so not so much change running but trying to create a story over top of the tune. So what I'd like to do in order to, I guess, give a little bit of insight onto what I'm thinking or how I'm addressing this is to take a tune of mine called Visions. And what I'm going to do is focus just on one section of it. And this is how I work on this kind of stuff. This is how I, I try to focus on creating more of melodic content, you know, and trying to create melodies um, and Hopefully, you know, the end goal is to develop a story when I'm improvising as opposed to just running the changes. So the very first, um, and let me say this real quick too, I strongly advocate that you work on arpeggios and outlining the chords. That's essential. That way you get inside the tune and you are able to express yourself the way that you want to express yourself through a tune. But just don't be limited by that. Make sure that you can go beyond that and, and you know, try to create a story throughout. And if your way of creating is a story, creating a story is, is still through, you know, running um, language that's more in the traditional style, then that's great too. But hopefully this will give you a little insight where I'm coming from. So the first chord is, uh, on this section of my tune, is going to be an E major 7 over B. And that's going to go to a C major 7 over G. Right? Now what I'm thinking about over the for this first chord, E major 7 over B, is I'm thinking about two things. It's either going to be just, you know, an E uh, major type of sound, or it's going to be a Lydian sound. You know, so in, in either case, I mean... throwing that Lydian in. I, I do it from time to time and it also, do, you know, it relates back to the context of the tune. I know I'm not giving the whole progression here, but um, I, I interchange that. Now as far as the next chord, the C major 7 over G, I do put the Lydian, the F sharp in there. Uh, that, that has a, a nice ring to it. And I could also think about that, you know, when I'm taking this E major 7, over B, if I have a 9 on top of that, the F sharp, then I can hold that over, right? So it's all about the voice leading, you know, trying to keep some voices the same as well. Um, 
So that's a reference point as well when, when I play over the tune. So what I'm going to do is put on the backing track to this, uh, and I'm going to let you uh, take a listen to how I approach this. Hopefully it gives some insight, and I'll kind of comment on some things as well. Here we go. about notes that I can lead to are keep the same. So let's take this E, right? The E for the first chord. So what I'm thinking about is a very simple little melodic statement. I'm thinking about using an E, an F sharp, and going for the C major 7, a C to the 7 of that chord, which is the B. simple, right? I mean, I'm not going through the whole arpeggio, I'm not playing the full scale, I'm trying to create little melodic bits that create an interest and hopefully develop a story, hopefully develop some interest, you know, as opposed to running constant lines, right? So let me explore a little bit more. I like to think about is creating continuity through the use of some sort of a, a rhythm that you know develops so taking a very simple rhythmic idea and trying to keep it going as well Part of this is also thinking about if I'm creating a line and there's some exercises that you can do with this and I'm not going to go into detail of that in this video but as I'm going through leading to the next available note right so uh, if I'm thinking well let me demonstrate so thinking about it like this That's like a voice leading type of exercise too, you know, where you go through and you play the line and you keep moving. Don't let the chord changes dictate that you have to all of a sudden make a dramatic shift. Lead into the next available note in, in the next chord. Let me do it again. That's a few ways that I practice working out tunes, and I do this with standards, and of course my tunes, my tunes are, are not so standard, and I find that it really helps me to explore the changes. I try to think about really being melodic with it, and uh, you know, it's, it's a continuous, you know, it's a continuous process. It, it's it's not the easiest in the beginning, especially if you're used to running more eighth note lines. And what you can find, and you have to be careful with this, what you can find is that when you're improvising, you, you have to be careful that you don't get into an autopilot approach. Because when you're working on this, 
Just like I've stated before, you want to think about limited creativity. Limit yourself. Think about, well, if I only could use a handful of notes, uh, very limited, maybe three, four, five notes, to improvise over a tune, that right there sets you up for a limited amount of creativity. You're being creative still. You can use whatever rhythms you like. You can put it in whatever order you like, but you have to limit yourself to only those notes that are given. And try to be very conscious about, very conscious about what it is that you're doing. Think of a rhythm before you play, or, you know, maybe sing along with what you're doing. But whatever you do, don't allow yourself to go on autopilot if you're trying to uh, implement these, these type of things into your practice, you know, this type of approach. I hope that you found this helpful and that you implement this into your practice. If you have suggestions for other videos, please leave a comment below. Let me know if you want me to cover any particular tunes or any approaches or if you have questions about anything that I'm doing. Please let me know. I'd be happy to address some of those issues because the goal for this is still going to be driven by the questions that you guys have. So thanks again for watching and keep working on the material. Don't give up on it. Keep pushing ahead. It's not easy in the beginning, but you'll get it. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video, and I hope that you can join me next time.